Welcome to SCD TV. I'm Carl Hartley, your favorite supercar dealer, and today I have a dilemma. Okay, so this is my dilemma. Um, I've owned my Bugatti now for two and a half years, and I love it. Um, but it's been away getting serviced for six weeks, nearly eight weeks, so I sort of feel like it's gone. You know, I haven't really used it, I haven't had a chance to use it. And since then, we've taken back into stock a Pagani Huayra Tempesta, which I can't stop looking at. So, I need your help. So, this specific car that we have is a very, very late car, so 2017. Um, originally supplied through the UK, UK registered, and it had a, it's got a factory Tempesta pack, which is extremely rare as far as I'm aware. It's the only one to be supplied to the UK with a Tempesta pack, and it's one of very few right-hand drives in the world with a Tempesta pack. So an opportunity has arisen, and I'm like, you either do it now or you don't do it at all kind of thing, you know? And I see the prices only increasing, um, I had the car back in August 2017 and sold it very quickly and we've now got it back into stock and it's a lot more money than what it was when we originally sold it. So it's either do it, don't do it, do it, don't do it. And unfortunately, I would love to be able to keep both, but a few reasons why I can't. The Wira is more rare than um, than a Veyron, um, numbers wise, they're they're very they're very they're very short. I mean, I think in total, there were a hundred Huayras made in the world, compared to four hundred and fifty Veyrons. Obviously, there's different variations of Veyrons. You know, you get your your Veyron, your Grand Sport, your Super Sport, your Super Sport Vitesse. Um, so, you know, I do think numbers of wires will increase with the Roadster that's just about to come out and I know there's some BCs that are being made and then there'll be some special editions and Pagani being Pagani they'll make a final run of like five cars and then they'll make a final final run and then they'll make definitely this is the final run and then they might make another tent. <laughs> when, you're, when you're driving and you're sitting in the cabin of either car the Veyron or the Huayra there's no comparison, really. Um, see, my Veyron's ten years old, so you're getting a ten-year-old Golf compared to a ten-year-old compared to a new Golf. It's completely different. But there's nothing like the cabin of a Wyra. I mean, it's oh my god! I don't even know where to start. It's it's just like it's like a spaceship. It's like nothing you've ever seen. Incredibly great quality of something that you've seen before. You've never seen anything like that I mean that's just insane it, it all starts from when you when you open the door when you open the door when you open any part of the wire there's just there's carbon just coming at you from all shapes everything's just exposed carbon um, and then you you get the driver's seat which is just shaped perfectly to your body behind that you get you know the hidden speakers what are all set in carbon you then put the key in and the whole, the whole thing lights up, but it lights up any color that you wish. There's a range of about 24 colors that you can choose from red to pink to green. I love the green, I've got it on green at the minute. Red, pink, green, yellow, blue, what, white, what, you know, whatever you want it to light up. Um, I've, driven, I've driven a few wires, um, and I've driven that one as well, and they get a lot of attention, but they don't get the attention that a Bugatti gets because everyone knows what a Bugatti is, what a Veyron is. They know what it is. From a four-year-old to a 70-year-old, they know that's a Bugatti. I've been places in a Wyra before and people have said, oh my God, your car's amazing. What, what is it? And, you know, you, that's, that's what you lose a bit. I don't agree with having any car as a showpiece. Not for me personally. I can see why some people do it. Um, but I, I, I never keep a collection of 40 cars. If I did have a personal collection of 40 cars, then I would never drive it because it's just, it's too nice. It's, you know, when you open the back clam, I mean, that's, if that gets dirty, it would just, it would take about four days to clean. Um, but I would drive it. I drive everything. 
uh, there's a big difference in a Tempesta car and a non-Tempesta car. I mean, the suspension, the wheels, everything is everything is completely completely different. The exhaust sound. <laughs> Um, it's not the loudest car in the world. It, obviously, it's a V12, so it's your V8s that really normally growl at you. Um, the V12s are more of a sort of a deeper, smooth. And it, it, you know, if you close your eyes and start it, you you know it's an AMG engine. It feels like you know a CL600 from back in the day. You know, a, a bi turbo or something. You just think, yeah, yeah, you know, that's 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 the noise. Um, I've, I've never really driven one fast, as in you know, really the performance it's one of them cars you almost feel like you don't need to it's i'm like that in the veyron though i don't really drive that fast one of the times i did uh, drive a wyro which is when they first came out um it was i mean thunderstorms unbelievable aquaplane all over the road i mean it, but you know it was okay and considering it's all rear wheel drive you're thinking like oh hang on a minute i need to be uh, i need to be careful here um, but you know, it, it was great. It was great, and it was actually better than than the Bugatti in the rain. The Bugatti in the rain is dreadful. The tires are ridiculously bad in the wet. I mean, you're doing sixty miles an hour, and you're shitting yourself. Like you know, aquaplaning all over the place. And when because it's four wheel drive, when you know one goes, all four go. So you just you got to keep three lanes free at the side of you. You know, one thing Pagani have always done from a 2002 Zonda is excel on quality, the build quality, the quality of the leather, the quality of the interior is always been top, top notch. Mix that with a renowned manufacturer, AMG, Mercedes AMG, making the power that goes behind the car, you're on for a winner. Now, the Wyra, obviously, we're in 2018 now, so 2015 when they came out, 2014, 15, 16, you know, cars move along. They've carried that quality further and further and further, and I think the gap between a Pagani's quality and the rest of the world in car manufacturer's quality has gotten bigger. I mean, it's almost, it's almost like, like a Patek Philippe watch. The, the internals, I mean, everything in a Pagani from where the, where the gear stick, you can see it's all exposed that goes into the gearbox. The rod that goes into the gearbox is all exposed. You can see that. The luggage that comes with the car, it comes with like a, a, a nine piece luggage set. It all fits around the engine. Um, it all fits, the, the suit carriers fit behind the seats. Um, you know, and it's, it's not too bad. I think it's 32,000 euros. It's definitely, it's definitely worth having. Would I, would I rather have a Veyron and a million pounds worth of other cars for a Huayra? No. If I was going to have the Veyron and a million pounds worth of other cars, I would rather chuck them both together and have a, have a Huayra. <laughs> like, that's, you know, I can see the difference in value. Obviously, it's a newer car. It's a rarer car. Pagani will and are a brand who, you know, when it comes to that kind of material, they, they rule the world. I mean, they, you know, a LaFerrari is not like sitting inside of that, but it has a little prancing horse on the front, which gives it every excuse in the world to be the best car in the world. Um, so no, I wouldn't have a Veyron and a million pounds worth of, you know, uh, um, an Aventador SV and uh, whatever, whatever, or SLS Black Series and great cars, but, but no, because a Huayra is a Huayra and that's, if if I was going to give the extra money, then I'd put it in that. Back to my dilemma. The dilemma being, at the minute, I have the Veyron, a P1, a Wyra, a LaFerrari, and a 918 Spider Wysak. And apart from the LaFerrari and the Wyra, um, all the other all the cars at a similar price, you know, between 1.3, 1.4. That kind of price. The the LaFerrari and the Wyra are 2.2 million. So there's a big jump there. So I've got to think to myself, do I see do I see the difference in value? Not only as a car, but as an investment. Um, because these cars, 
they're not just a car. People don't just buy them because they want a car. They, they, you have to look at future values, future investments. And the only time you look at a car as not an investment of this magnitude is when you know it's not an investment. You know, so if, you, if you're going to buy a car for two million pounds and you think, I really, really want that car and it's probably going to be worth 1.6 or 1.7 when I come to sell it, it's what you want, so, so you buy it. What makes life easy is when you want to buy something and you have a reason not to buy it. Okay, that makes my life a lot more easy. When I want to buy something that's extremely expensive and I know that it's going to appreciate in value and I can't find a reason why not to buy it, that makes my life hard. I want a reason not to buy it. The only reason I have not to buy it is my Bugatti. That's the only reason. Like, without a shadow of a doubt, if I'd never owned a Bugatti, it would just a no-brainer. Like, definitely, definitely, without, without any shadow of a doubt. But, once you own a Bugatti, it's, 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 everything's just different. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's not a case of just do a swapsy. <laughs> because if it was, then you would, obviously. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a million pound, it's, the car's a million pound more. Um, but you can do a lot with a million pound, you know. But a million pound in the right hands could turn it into five. But I suppose a wire is for the person who is, who is there, who, what's another million?